What's going on guys and welcome back to Drive New Hampshire. Now today, I'm gonna to tell you how the hell this happened to my Jeep. So if you guys are new to the channel, welcome. My name is Jake and this is my cheap Jeep project that I picked up for $1,500. And at the time, that was the cheapest running, driving, not used for parts, Jeep Wrangler TJ series that I could find for sale. And soon I would find out why that was. If you're not new to the channel, you're probably saying, why the f does that guy still have that stupid thing? Get rid of it. But I'll dive into the story and tell you guys why I still do have it. Because it was a long and heartbreaking process working on this damn thing. Also, a side note, it's extremely windy here today in New Hampshire. And I apologize if some of the audio was not up to par. But I also apologize if one of these stupid helicopter things stabs me in the eye and I go on a rampant rampage of swearing. So again, my apologies in advance. So a lot of you guys have been messaging me and commenting on my other Jeep videos saying, what happened to the blue Jeep? Tell us what happened to it. So if you guys remember, this is what the blue Jeep TJ looked like when I first bought it. looked at it, I knew it was going to need a passenger side fender, I knew it was going to need new wind guards, I knew something was wrong with the electrical, it wouldn't always start, it needed the paint buffed, it needed a few light bulbs put in, and it was good to go. There was a little more to the story than that. What I didn't expect was at the end of this, I, the hardest thing was going to be taking the rims off of it. I'll get a little more into that in a few minutes. Now, a major issue I found with this Jeep when I went to buy it was the guy said he had to jump start it. So when I went to look at it, the Jeep was running, and when I took it on the test drive, he simply said, don't stall it, it might not start again. So you would think weak battery, maybe something like that. So I took it on the test drive, I was on my best manual driving behavior, I didn't stall the Jeep. I purchased it, and when I stopped at the store on the ride home and tried to start it again, it didn't start. After pop starting and getting it home, I dug into what the issues could be, and there was all sorts of potentials, you know? It could be the starter, it could be something electrical with the clutch safety switch, but I lucked out and it was just the starter. So after $80, $100, threw in the starter myself. Started right up, it ran, and then I had a cheap running, driving, and starting Jeep Wrangler on my hands. Ah, but just the way life goes, I couldn't be that lucky. So at this point, I thought I was in the clear. I had a running, driving, starting Jeep Wrangler TJ. I got it for very short money. The body was straight. It had a few minor rust issues that I had to take care of. It had a clean frame. All it needed was a little odds and ends. Easy, simple, fun to do stuff. But life has a great way of sometimes. Now the Jeep did have nice factory aluminum rims when I got it. They were scuffed. They were going to need a little bit of love to complete the whole presentation of the Jeep. So as you would do, you take your lug nut wrench, make sure it's the right size, and you go to spin the lug nut. What you don't want is it to snap, which mine did. So I went, ah, oh, shoot, another thing I'm gonna have to do. Went to the next one. Spin, huh, this is the right size lug nut. Spins again. The lug nut was stripped. So I went to the next one. Stripped again. Went to the next one. Stripped again. So at this point, I'm thinking, wow, I have really bad luck. No, I'm using the right size socket. I've done this a million times in a million other vehicles. What could be going wrong here? Every single lug nut on the wheel strip. All right, well, this is gonna be fun. You know, there's all sorts of little tips and techniques to get these off. I'll just recover and move to the next one. Every single one of those stripped as well. So I said, wow, I am really having some bad luck here. I'll move to the next one. All those stripped as well. So finally, I get to the back driver's side and all of the lug nuts come off. The next you go to the store, you get one of these emergency lug nut removal tools that spins on and bites into the lug nut and gets it off no matter what. And you use an impact gun with like 2,000 pounds of braking power, and naturally you break this. So now you know you're really f So then you take to Google and say, hey everybody, I can't get these lug nuts off. What can you do? And people say, oh, you know, you take a, you take a, you heat it up and you, 
use PB Blaster and you can take a smaller size socket and hit it on. And after breaking like four sockets in half, for the next reasonable option, which is call your uncle who has a torch. And you heat the lug nuts up so much that they melt. Even melting them doesn't get all the material out of the way for you to be able to pull the tire off. Lastly, you resolve to this. That's right, we had to take an industrial saw and literally cut every spoke of the rim and then cut the center piece out, which meant cutting all the studs. And when you do that, you have to replace all the studs, of course, but you also f the brakes. So then you get to do all the brakes. Stupid. <laughs> so I was lucky and had the original factory rims off my 99 Jeep TJ that I daily drive, the black one, and I was able to clean those up, mount these tires on them, and put it on. Now that it's all done, it puts such a sour taste in my mouth that I really don't want to do anything else to this thing. My black Jeep could stand to use some work, and I've created a Jeep that actually is has cleaned up quite nice. So this may not be the last update video that you see on this Jeep. There very well may be another one which says that I get rid of it. But other than that, this Jeep has really, really cleaned up to be a very, very clean example of a Jeep Wrangler TJ. So I want to thank you all very much for watching. I hope this answered all the questions that you had about this Jeep and the process and where it stood. Now I will include links to the first video I shot when I first purchased this Jeep so you can see what it looked like when I first bought it. I'll also include links to the rest of my Jeep videos so you can check those out. See me wheeling my black TJ and my brother and his four-door JK. But that's it for today. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Happy motoring.